cuts, eh? Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Friday night in the shop. Today's video is kind of the trials and tribulations of building these junk saws. Um, we're going to get right into the footage. This footage is spread out over one night after dinner. I came out and started messing with this saw because I wanted to put it in the wood. Well, guess what? It didn't really work out and I had a lot of issues with this saw. So let's jump right into it. This is just going to be some footage of me on the tailgate prepping the saw, putting a chain on. Now, first thing, friends, is I had issues finding a chain and bar that would even fit on this saw. Uh, don't ask me why. I have another 394. This saw, I couldn't get the bar and chain. I couldn't get it, the chain to line up, and the chain didn't fit on the bar, and I was having problems with the adjuster. So let's jump right into it, and I'll interject a couple times during this video. Check this out. Um, this is a video you probably want to watch to the end because, well, stay tuned. Check this out. Okay, let's put a bar and chain on this. Now, I don't know what's going on right now, but I don't have a ton of time tonight, and uh, I just want to try this thing out. All the bars and chains I have, the chains are too short, so I'll uh, I'll have to pull out my breaker and make a new chain. For whatever reason, all my combos are too short, so I was going to put this bar on it. I've had this bar for years. It's a brand new 36-inch Echo. Um, chain's too short, so I need to put a link or two in that chain. I got a brand new chain for that. So we'll throw, this is the OEM bar off of my, uh, off of my 572, because that's the longest bar they would, would supply me with. Let's move you guys back here. So this is the chain break off my 394, my other saw, because the chain break on this thing has no guts, so I figured in the... Now friends, it's rare I ever get a kickback, not doing stuff like this, but it does happen. So, I'll, uh, I'll, 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 use, I'll use the side cover with a chain brake. This is pretty much a new chain, it's got little to no time on it, so we'll see how she cuts. I only ground this bar for, you know, a very limited amount of time. I like testing saws with a stock chain. So that you guys could compare it to your saws. Now this has the internal chain adjuster. Some people don't like that. It doesn't really bother me because you guys know me. My saws are all old. And I mean these are my favorite saws. So There we go. Never used the adjuster on this. It's a little tight. We need a little cleaning. Okay, I'm just going to cinch this down. Okay. Here she is. Uh, I fired the saw up. A little bit of tuning. I'm not sure what this ignition is going to do. Um, it's either going to work or it's not. The saw feels like it has a little hesitation. Feels ignition related. Um, it may be timing. Um, we can always play with that later, but let's see what this saw does in the wood. You can see uh, these oil a 24 inch bar like nothing. Um, I crispened up the, the high jet a little bit. And uh, you guys, listen to this thing. It just, it feels like it's got a little stumble. Could be carved, but I'm thinking ignition. Listen to this.
bolts right like that. You guys hear it's got a little bit of a stumble. Um, whatever, let's put it in the wood and see what it's going to do. It's a it's an old school turd saw build. Let's cut some smaller wood to start with and then uh, just see what it's going to do. And then if, if we think it's going to work out, we'll put it in something bigger. Okay, I'm back. So you see I'm prepping the saw and getting it all running. Now notice when I first ran it on the bench, it had a little pause. Probably around five, 6,000 RPM. It felt like it was laboring. Almost like a saw that's going to seize. And right away I was like, is this thing going to seize? Well, I figured let's put it in the wood. Okay, so right there I'm already wondering, is this saw, is there something going on with it? Check this out. I put the saw in the wood. I'll probably do a little voiceover while I'm doing it. Watch this thing cut. It's struggling and laboring. This saw has no power in the cut. It's got nothing. I'm leaning on it and check this out friends. Uh, I'll cut right to the cutting. When I lean on this saw it keeps stalling and it's just kind of all over the place. Oh, she's slow, eh? How slow is she? She's slower than a pail of diesel oil sitting outside on a 30 below day in a Manitoba winter. That's how slow she is. So at this point, I'm like, what's going on with the saw? It starts and idles good. It's really hard to tune. It seems to be rich and then lean and it's just got no pull. So I'm just being patient, I'm tuning it, and trying it again in the wood. Um, you notice right here, it's slow. Like, look at how slow this thing's cutting. And I'm like feathering it through. Now I pull it up there and it doesn't seem to be four stroking. And I'm thinking, how is this thing lean again? It's literally all over the place. So I give it a little more high jet. And I'm like, this is, this is going to be one of those saws. But again, it starts nice. Right here, I finished the cut. Okay, it's four stroking now. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, let's dog her in. It's a big saw, right? Oh, chain's dying, chain's dying. Oh, oh, it's starting to have a little bit of pull. But I'm like, there's something up with this saw. So at this point, I shut her down and I go back to the drawing board. I'm listening for what the saw's doing, but it's like, you know. There's not much a fella can do in this situation. You gotta just be patient and not do too many things too quickly. Again, I give her one more cut. This is after some more tuning and the saw is actually cutting decent here, but it's still a lame duck. It's just got no power. As you guys can see there, this saw is an absolute lame duck. Now right away, I'm showing you guys this stuff. 
where would your mind go if this was your saw? Well, is it my porting? Is it the fact that I put a single ring in? What's the problem? Well, friends, first things first, I put this thing back on the bench. The air deflector that was behind here, for some reason, it was rubbing on the flywheel. The flywheel had already chewed a hole in it. Well, that's going to seriously rub, rob power. It was right against the flywheel and just grinding on itself there. Okay, so first thing I did, I cut the part that was rubbing on the flywheel off. And then I did something else. Okay, friends, this is something we don't normally do on the channel, but I'm going to show you. What I did to this saw was I took the timing key out. I marked the flywheel and the crank and I slipped it. I slipped the flywheel on the crank. I advanced the timing about one third of the timing key, slapped the saw back together and check this out. Not perfect, but better. Okay, watch this. <laughs> Instantly, when I started the saw, if you guys listened, it's got snap, it's revving up quickly, it's not laboring, it just feels like a, a completely different animal. So right away, I knew it was on to something. Now notice, when I dog the saw in, it's still, it's stalling. And I'm wondering, is there something going on with the clutch? This bar, it's a 24 inch bar with an eight pin socket or a sprocket on it. It's not anything crazy for a saw like this. So starting to wonder. Well, now check this out, friends. I went back in there. I put a seven pin on the saw and tried it. Well, that didn't change anything. So what I did was I took the flywheel off and I slipped it about half the timing key, which is about, I think it's about five, six degrees, maybe seven, somewhere around there, okay? Now watch this thing, 32 inch bar, skip chain. It's absolutely murdering wood until I have another problem. Check this out. This is showing you guys timing. The saw was lazy and then it started to cut better and now it's really good. Check this out.
Okay, in the interest of time, I took the saw apart. Here is the stock chain brake. I tried throwing this on just to see, like, hey, maybe there's something wrong. Notice there's no guide plate on the inside of this, but nowhere. Okay, so it's not that. Here's the problem, friends. See this guide plate here? It's cut. This is not a two-piece guide plate. This is a one-piece guide plate. And it looks like the chain has been rubbing. You can see there's like a shiny spot there. And there's lots of new wear. So I think what's happening is this plate, you can see it right here. See how it's bowed out here? I can feel it. This plate is actually grabbing the chain and throwing the chain off. The chain was coming off from this end, not from the far end. A lot of times when you throw a chain, it, it's at the front, right? This one's coming off at the back. That's why the chain wasn't flying okay so and if you look at this wrap this thing's thrown a thousand chains now that's not uncommon in a logging saw but this thing shows a lot of wear on the wrap you can see on the bottom there that maybe this thing was a perpetual chain thrower i've had saws like that that throw chains but so this is definitely the issue so i'm gonna have to figure out a new plate or order one um other than that friends Timing, okay? I wanted to show you guys all the things that are going wrong with this saw. Now, I did I did order a new coil, a proper coil from this from Wolf Creek. Uh, it'll be here any day. Thank you, Ryan. The coil in this is for a 272. It, I put it in the saw ran perfect till I put it in the wood. Now, what I did was, friends, if you want to advance your timing, you're curious how far you're going... I'll put the timing wheel on this side of the saw. I'll rig up a pointer off the flywheel. I'll mount it to one of the starter dogs, okay? And I'll cross it over. And then when you turn the flywheel, you can actually measure in degrees, how many degrees you're advancing your, your, uh, your, your timing, okay? This one's about six degrees right now. What are the symptoms if you go too far in your timing? Kick back. Okay, your saw is going to be really hard to start. It's going to rip it's going to rip the recoil out of your hands. This one is on the cusp of being hard to start if you noodle arm it. If you pull it hard, it starts right now. Okay? I put this on here because I was playing with the timing. I'm probably going to take this back off because the timing is in a good spot. Okay? So, first thing, if you over advance your saw, it will rip this out of your hand. That's your first warning. If you can get it started, the second thing that you will notice, it'll start to pop and fart in the cut. It'll sound funny, okay? Third thing, it'll start to run really hot. It'll You'll feel the heat coming off the saw, okay? Fourth thing, third, fourth, what are we at? You might hear the saw start to ping or make funky ignition sounds or all kinds of things okay so really listen to the saw and the last thing is look at your plug the plug in this thing is tan okay which i'm happy with when you build a, a fairly hot ported saw you will get a tan plug a gray plug even sometimes uh golden brown is about perfect this one's on the tan side but again when you're running a pipe like this often your plug colors will be lighter than what you normally see never had a problem so anyhow friends i haven't had many saws in this channel that need a lot of timing work and i may tweak them and i never film it so i thought here's the perfect example showing you guys how horribly a ported saw can run with lazy timing or sometimes i put the wrong coil on this saw now i think the reason was this the coil in this saw doesn't have the right timing for this saw because it's a 272 coil so Anyhow, friends, I hope that helps you guys out. If you're going to do a timing advance, less is more. Don't go, don't start turning the flywheel a quarter inch at a time. It, you'll, you'll get, you'll end up with a saw that doesn't start at all. You know, maybe start with about a quarter of the key and just keep tweaking it. It might take you an hour to get it right. Once you get it right, figure out what your key needs to be and then grind a key down, slip it in there and lock it all down and you're good. Or don't put a key in at all. Um, I have a couple saws that don't have a timing key in them. Once you lock them down, they usually don't move. But uh, anyways, friends, I hope that helps you guys see or hear timing 
And uh, like I said, go back in the video and just fast forward to the couple of spots where I'm running the saw. And you should be able to hear the saw sounds raspier, lumpier, and just angrier with the timing advance. And it also cuts way faster. Friends, I'm actually pulling up trying to stall the saw and it won't stall. So anyhow, hope you guys enjoy these junk builds or turd saws or whatever you want to call them. Um, they're a lot of fun. They're a labor of love. And I love taking something that is nothing and putting it back into service like this saw. So... Anyhow, friends, keep sending your questions of the day via email. Uh, I really enjoy hearing from you guys. And uh, John Bradley, you didn't have to do that, buddy, but thank you. Um, I was having a horrible day at work, and I got that in the mail, buddy, and I read it, and I was like, thanks, man. You made my day. You didn't have to do that, but you did. You're a good fella, and uh, I'll be seeing you in Ohio, buddy, guaranteed. Anyhow, friends, thanks for watching. Take her easy, and I'll see you in a couple days. Later.